50 degrees below zero, where metal snaps like glass, these machines keep working. Taller than a two-story house, this Arctic hauler still starts at minus 51 degrees. Ahead, nuclear icebreakers carve three meter thick ice to keep polar routes open. At extreme cold, many steels turn brittle, losing toughness and failing without warning. Fluids thicken, lubricants stop flowing, and engines seize unless redesigned for Arctic conditions. Every start here is calculated. Heaters, diagnostics, and pre-lube cycles prevent catastrophic damage. Compared to standard models, Arctic machines add layers of protection, heating, and ruggedized components. These fleets allow mining, logistics, and science to continue where nature resists every movement. Reliable machines mean power, heat, and communications for isolated Arctic communities and research bases. As polar routes open and demand for resources grows, Arctic-capable machinery becomes strategically vital. Behind every Arctic mission lies decades of innovation in materials, powertrains, and cold weather design. Now, step inside the world of Arctic engineering the science of conquering extreme cold. This specialized hauler weighs over 20 tons and carries heavy loads across frozen ground. Arctic engines couple high power output with heaters and insulation to maintain operating temperatures. Primary mission, transport rock, fuel, or supplies reliably where roads are ice, not asphalt. At the bow, Thick, reinforced steel structures distribute crushing loads through the entire hull. Hydraulic systems use low temperature fluids and insulated lines to stay responsive in deep freeze. Control systems are duplicated and hardened, ensuring operators maintain command despite cold-induced electronic stress. Azimuth thrusters vector power in any direction, enhancing maneuverability in chaotic, pressure-packed sea ice. Special alloys and heat treatments keep steels tough and ductile far below freezing. Arctic variants are often built in dedicated lines, integrating heaters, insulation, and reinforced structures. Because of their size, many Arctic machines ship in modules assembled on site near the ice. Secure the boom now. Clear on the left, get the tracks tensioned. Heaters are online, let's move! All these adaptations are expensive. Some Arctic capable machines cost millions beyond standard versions. Operating here needs tightly coordinated crews. Drivers, mechanics, electricians, and logistics all synchronized. Operators undergo specialized training for poor visibility, ice physics, and emergency protocols unique to polar work. These machines are collaborations between engine builders, material scientists, and control system experts. Taking a concept from sketch to proven Arctic hardware can easily consume a decade. Before deployment, parts endure climate chamber torture, repeated cold cycles, shock loads, and endurance runs. With the foundation built, it's time to see how these giants actually work in the ice. Startup begins long before ignition. Fluids and components must be coaxed into temperature range. Special cold rated starters and high current batteries overcome oil thick as honey at 1 Nata's 40. Real time monitoring dashboards track hundreds of parameters, catching issues before they escalate in isolation. First phase. Establish reliable haul cycles on frozen roads sculpted specifically for these machines. Sensors pierce whiteouts, mapping terrain so drivers maintain alignment where horizon and ground blur. Environmental monitoring systems watch wind, snowfall, and temperature minimizing triggers for avalanches or ground failures. 
Heated cabs, filtered air, and ergonomic controls help humans stay effective despite brutal outside conditions. Despite the cold, optimized fleets can move thousands of tons daily with tightly scheduled cycles. Frequent inspections catch cracks, leaks, or ice buildup long before they turn into stranded equipment. Collected data reveals how performance drifts as temperatures fall, shaping future design tweaks and operating rules. Optimization software continuously refines routes, speeds, and loading patterns to keep efficiency high in chaos. When visibility collapses, navigation shifts from human eyes to satellite positioning and terrain scanning sensors. Fuel systems rely on winter formulations, heaters, and circulation to avoid waxing and line blockages. At full stride, these operations deliver industrial scale output where conditions once made work impossible. Automation brains run on hardened computers, tested to operate reliably at sub-zero ambient temperatures. Sensor arrays fuse radar, LIDAR, cameras, and GPS to perceive terrain in hidden beneath drifting snow. AI assistance smooths control, reducing slips and optimizing traction far faster than humans alone. Two-way satellite links let engineers supervise Arctic fleets from operation centers on different continents. Modern icebreakers coordinate with satellites and ice services, planning routes through shifting sea ice mosaics. These systems adapt in milliseconds, changing throttle and routing as snow density and grip vary. Predictive maintenance schedules prioritize parts most stressed in cold, swapping them before breakdowns occur. Backup heaters and redundant pumps provide safety nets when primary systems shut down or falter. In hazardous storms, some machines switch to remote control, keeping humans far from exposure. Integrated digital infrastructure lets ships, trucks, and loaders coordinate, minimizing idle time in brutal cold. Digital twins let engineers test new algorithms virtually before exposing real hardware to polar risk. Because these machines are networked, cybersecurity hardening is essential to keep critical Arctic operations safe. Real-time adjustments in traction, suspension, and engine mapping keep machines stable on unpredictable surfaces. New electric and fuel cell groomers promise lower emissions without sacrificing power in frozen resorts. Breakthrough hulls and high-power electric drives redefine what a single ship can do in ice. Here, wind chill can rival minus 6 Fahrenheit, yet operations carry on as routine. Modern nuclear icebreakers can crush through ice thicker than a grown person is tall. Compared to early explorers' open vehicles, today's Arctic machines are faster, safer, and vastly more capable. Some ships now deploy sub-ice drones to survey thickness and hazards invisibly hidden below the surface. Specialized groomers sculpt snow into reliable runways and roads for aircraft and ground logistics. When storms hit, machines themselves become shields, barriers, and lifelines protecting camps from destruction. A task once needing dozens of people with shovels is now done by one engineered giant. Over a single winter, Arctic fleets can move millions of tows of material across ice highways. Some icebreakers remain on station for months, reopening routes as ice closes in again and again. Seasonal ice infrastructure powered by these machines can be cheaper than permanent roads in remote regions. Thanks to redundancy and monitoring, some Arctic fleets achieve impressive reliability despite vicious conditions. Modular designs let a single platform perform many tasks, critical where transport is difficult and expensive. Engineers already plan upgrades, more autonomy, cleaner power, smarter sensing. For machines still early in service. Manufacturers compete fiercely, each promising superior performance at colder temperatures and in harsher terrain. From here, the story shifts from how they work 
to what their presence really means. Today, many flagship Arctic projects already depend completely on these cold conquering machines to exist. They've enabled trade, resupply remote communities, and keep essential goods flowing through frozen choke points. Arctic-capable machinery underpins jobs for operators, mechanics, scientists, and entire support industries worldwide. Technologies proven here often trickle down. Better batteries, lubricants, and controls for everyday machines. Next-generation plans imagine mostly autonomous Arctic corridors, linked by smart ports and robotic platforms. Higher autonomy could remove many human risks, letting machines push deeper into dangerous regions. Solutions born for the Arctic are now applied wherever cold, isolation, and remoteness collide. Cleaner propulsion aims to reduce local pollution, while scientists track impacts on fragile polar ecosystems. These machines transform human presence, reducing individual hardship, yet amplifying our ability to reshape landscapes. Research pipelines continue exploring new materials, coatings, and lubricants to push temperature limits even lower. As capabilities grow, competition intensifies over routes, resources, and which technologies will dominate polar operations. For the people here, Arctic engineering means possibility, work, discovery, and survival in an unforgiving place. Yet even with mighty machines, the Arctic still dwarfs human presence reminding us of our limits. Machines now operate where early explorers barely survived, steel and software thriving in lethal cold. In conquering extreme cold, art proves how fermentation and